Is it possible to have ticks and not have Tourette's? Let's find out. My name is Luca and on this channel I make videos about what it's like to live with Tourette's. But Tourette's is not the only tick disorder out there. So in this video we'll look at all the tick disorders that are currently known, look at the dif different diagnostic criteria and just find out what the differences are and what the similarities are between the different tick disorders. I'm so happy you're here. If you are interested in learning more about Tourette's or other tick disorders, please consider subscribing, join our Bone Itch family and let's do this. Hey, <clears throat> so there are three tick disorders currently known and they are Tourette's syndrome, persistent chronic motor or vocal tick disorder or persistent tick disorder and provisional tick disorder. Now, Tourette's syndrome is considered the most severe of these three, but that of course does not mean that living with either of the other tick disorders is, cannot be extremely debilitating. Really just a matter of a, a case by case, case, uh, case by case situation. No person with ticks is going to be the same. So even though Tourette's on paper is considered the, mo mo the most severe because it has the most symptoms, that does not mean that the other one are just a walk in the park, of course. So let's start with Tourette's. In order for someone to be diagnosed with Tourette's, you need to have these symptoms. You need to have two or more motor tics. And those are anything to do with movement. It can be blinking or, or shrugging your shoulders, flexing a muscle, or do, do, even doing a more complex type of movement. And at least one vocal tic. That can be words and phrases, but also coughing or, or, or any other sound, humming, whistling. You need to have had ticks for at least a year. And these ticks can occur many times a day or maybe once a day or just sometimes. They don't have to be there all of the time. And it's even normal for them to kind of come and go. Your ticks need to have started before the age of 18. And of course, those Symptoms cannot be caused by some other medical disorder or because of medication or, or drugs or anything like that. So sometimes you'll hear people talking about someone with Tourette's and they'll say, oh, they had a very severe form of Tourette's because they had both vocal and motor tics. But by definition, everyone with Tourette's has both motor and vocal tics. The severity of the Tourette's is more about the severity of those ticks and how much they impact that person's life. It's not because they have both motor and vocal ticks. Everyone with Tourette's has both motor and vocal ticks. I hope that's clear. Of course, it's possible to only have motor ticks or vocal ticks, but that's not Tourette's. In that case, you might have persistent or chronic motor or vocal tic disorder. The diagnostic criteria for persistent tic disorder, I'm just going to say it like that because it's a bit of a long phrase, are a lot like Tourette's. So again, you have to be younger than 18. They, the tics have to be there for longer than a year, but they don't have to be there all of the time. They can be many times a day, once a day, once a month. That's all the same. The tics cannot be caused by medication or another medical condition, and you cannot be already be diagnosed with Tourette's in order to have persistent tic disorders. The only thing that's different is that you either have motor tics or have vocal tics. That's the only difference. Now, there's another tic disorder. And just like with persistent tic disorders, you cannot get this diagnosis if you already have a diagnosis of Tourette's or a diagnosis of persistent tic disorder. This is provisional tic disorder. With provisional tic disorders, you can have motor tics, vocal tics, either or both. The tics have to start before the age of 18, cannot be caused by medication or drugs or other medical conditions. The only thing that's different is that they cannot be there for longer than one year for 12 months. 
So whereas the other two tick disorders, Tourette's and persistent tick disorders, have to have been there for longer than 12 months, provisional tick disorder means it's just less, less than a year. What you'll notice is what you'll notice is that. So you might have noticed that in all of these tick disorders, you need to have had ticks before the age of 18. But there are people that have adult onset Tourette's or adult onset ticks. So how does that work? The theory is that people that have adult onset Tourette's syndrome or other tick disorders already had ticks when they were very young, but they just don't remember it. And their ticks just got worse and worse when they grew older which is possible, of course. It can also be a part of, an, of another psychiatric of an, or, 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 or of another neurological condition. There are different options, but on paper, you have to have had ticks before the age of 18 in order to get diagnosed with a tick disorder. There are, I, I know loads of people that didn't have ticks until, until they were well past 18 and they still got diagnosed with Tourette or with another tick disorder. So if you are over 18 and you're watching this and you only started, just started having ticks, I still urge you to go to a doctor and have a neurologi neurologist assess you because it does not mean that you don't have it. There might also be something else going on. So in general, it's a good idea to go to a neurologist, to a doctor when you start experiencing ticks. I don't think you'll, you are any less valid if you didn't have ticks as a child. I didn't have very severe ticks until I was in my 20s and I still got diagnosed. I did have ticks as a child. They were just not that bad. And again, everyone's Tourette's and everyone's tick disorders are going to be different. So those are the three tick disorders. Quite simple when you look at it like that. But if you have any questions about them, leave a comment below. I'll try and answer them. I'll leave some of the resources that I used for this video in the, in the description box as well. I do have loads of other videos about Tourette's on my channel. If you want to learn more, just browse around on my channel and um, please subscribe because I'll upload a new video at least every week. And there's so much more to talk about. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Love you all. Bye.